On a cold autumn morning in April, as the sun gradually rises, we give thanks to those who've gone before us. For over a hundred years, Australians of all backgrounds and beliefs have answered their nation's call to serve. Some of them have given their lives to that calling. Others carry wounds, seen and unseen, yet remain resolute in their service. All of them have faced down the darkest winters and the deepest shadows, standing firm in our time of need. On Anzac Day, as a nation, we thank them for their service. Last year, we confronted the deep shadow of the COVID-19 global pandemic. Yet we worked together through tough times and hard but necessary restrictions to ensure our country saw the dawn of a better day. On this day, last year, the light of the autumn sun shone on Australians standing in their driveways or on sidewalks or at home with a television tuned to the dawn service. We stood at dawn and stood together, no matter where we were or how far apart. Just like today, we honoured the service of a nation together. This year, we've much to celebrate. This includes the centenary of the Royal Australian Air Force and all of the brave airmen and women who've served. Pioneers like Sir Richard Williams, Flight Officer Florence McKenzie and Sergeant Vince Douglas Bunder. Sir Richard Williams was a distinguished First World War pilot who served with the Australian Flying Corps in the Middle Eastern Theatre. He's rightly remembered as the father of the Royal Australian Air Force and played a pivotal role in its establishment. But there is more to his story of foresight and courage. To demonstrate the vital role of aviation in the planning and defence of Australia, he proposed a daring flight, one he would pilot himself. In September 1926, with the help of co-pilot Flight Lieutenant Ivor McIntyre and mechanic Flight Sergeant Les Trist, he flew a seaplane from Point Cook in Victoria to Papua New Guinea and then on to the Solomon Islands, all without incident. His point was proven, and today the RAAF continues that legacy of courage, daring and teamwork. We also remember trailblazing women like Flight Officer Florence McKenzie, an electrical engineer who served as an officer in the Women's Emergency Signalling Corps. Flight Officer McKenzie trained other women to work as wireless telegraphists and signalers during the Second World War. She faced strong resistance from some quarters against employing her highly trained and talented women. Nevertheless, she persisted. She made a profound difference not only through her own service to Australia, but by enabling others to serve with her. And we remember Sergeant Vince Douglas Bunder. Vince was only a teenager when he enlisted to fight in the Second World War, a runaway from the Sherberg Aboriginal settlement in New South Wales. Although life was tough there, Vince's family suspected his true motivation in enlisting was his sense of justice his need to protect his people and his strong identification as a Waka Waka warrior. And that he considered it the right thing to do. He served in the 2nd 2nd Machine Gun Battalion, fighting in Palestine and at Alamein. He fought with the battalion in Papua, in Borneo and in New Guinea. Vince's feeling of the right thing to do was so strong that he kept on serving the country he loved. He transferred to the Royal Australian Air Force and was a carpenter in support of 77 Squadron in the Korean War. He was one of many Indigenous Australians to serve before and since, continuing a proud history of service in the Australian Defence Force. The record of Vince's service spans over 450 pages in the National Archives, just one story among many. He proudly served his country for 35 years. Today, pilots such as squadron leaders Andrew Jackson and David Bell lead us into the future. 
They were the first two Australian pilots selected to undergo F-35A Lightning II training in the United States. They've made us proud in representing Australia and they too will train new generations of Australians who will one day follow their own call to serve. It may be a little chilly in April when we commemorate the hardship, heroism and sacrifice it takes to keep our country safe and free. But on this day, we remember that the call to serve comes in all forms and that Australians from all walks of life answer. We also remember that we will face the deep winters and dark shadows together. That after the hardship, heroism and sacrifice comes the dawn, when we help each other on the road to recovery. Spring is always around the corner and the sunlight that warms us all on Anzac Day as we gather, march and remember together is just a small reminder of the better times that come when we stand together, lest we forget.